Everything isn't all about you. How's everybody doing out there? I am Super Solican, and this is The Awakening. I really want people to get this through their head, that in this life, everything isn't all about you. You have to understand that. Sacrifice will be required at some point in time. Everything isn't all about you. Sometimes when you have children or things like that in situations, you have to put yourself second. You understand? Sometimes when you taking, you may be taking care of an elderly parent or something like that. You have to put yourself second. Everything's not always going to be about you standing in the forefront. And it's always about me, 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 me. In a marriage, you know, men and women have to put themselves second sometimes. I said in a marriage, men and women have to put themselves second at some times. And it can be, it, it, it may not be a fair balance of that. You understand? But that's what comes with you doing, you having the Holy Spirit within you and you doing what God wants you to do instead of worrying about what man wants you to do or what suits you, you know, all the time you or what you want. You know, because we all know that God is here is a provider. God is a father that gives you what you need. He don't always give you what you want because the things sometimes what we want, we don't understand. We don't see that they're they're there to destroy us. You understand? Now, I'm not saying that sometimes we're not going to be doing things that serve us. I mean, of course we are at the same time. But this is where the beauty of Christianity comes in. You serving Christ in becoming selfless, serving others, dying to self, crushing your ego, crush it dead. If you're able to do that very, very hard feat, the thing that the, the ego, the pride, the self, the thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven if you able to crush that feet and die to that, the Holy Spirit will aid you in that and he'll aid you in doing that. So it may not happen overnight for everybody. Some people may do it in three days. But once you do that and master that, you'll gain the gem of life. What is that? You'll gain pure joy, pure peace because you're no longer chasing what that is for self. You're pleasing God and you that'll become what you want. That'll become what you want to do. That'll become everything that you need in life. And going and once again, once you kill the ego, die to self, stop being so selfish and learn to uh, serve others and make that your mission, that will give back to you. That will build and edify you. That will build you up. You will be able to serve yourself in the things that you need. Because human beings are not self, um, self, like soul organisms, lone organisms. A lot of times when people are a lone wolf, that's very abnormal. You know, people may stay to themselves, but they still go around. They still have family members and key people that they're around. They have to have relationships. That's just how nobody just shut up in their house for a whole week. Don't talk to no one or have no human contact. Imagine you being in your house for a whole week with no phone, no cell phone, no TV, no, no human contact. You know what I'm saying? No magazines, nothing. You can the only you never see another human face and they do that for a whole seven days. By the time you got out of there, you probably wouldn't you you, you wouldn't want to do it again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be sane. You understand? So human beings are collective organisms. You know, that's why it says it takes a village to raise a child. That's you know when when you having a baby, you have to go to someone else to help you deliver it and, and offer their services to you. You understand? When you, all the vehicles, when you want to drive, like you have a whole team of people who built this vehicle so you can move around and about. So don't ever try to be like, you know, it's just me, me, me. Heck, heck to the no. You understand? If um, 
if something happened, one human, you know, if, if over here or somebody was invading the country and everybody was had to, to, to defend it, you would have, that would be when camaraderie, you see people getting more camaraderie in, um, in America. Right now, America is divided. It's all sliced up into little pieces and sects and cults and, and divisions. But if war came or, or a simple threat was a, 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 a mutual threat was here in the land, you will see everybody start, you know, getting together like they were supposed to in the first place. You know, that's just how it works with human beings. Human beings sometimes have to be jolted. You know, to to understand that it's not all about you, man. You know, it's people out here hurting. That's why you see people in these other countries. They starving. They got these distended bellies. They dying. And you got other people who over there, they just don't care. You know, you got other people over there and they just be like, well, maybe they deserve that. Or, you know, hey, that ain't me. That's because they don't understand. You know, they, they too busy caught up in self. You know, they not um, empathizing with those people. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 2 uh, through 3, I want to get in this. Um, the, and the title of it is Following Christ in Humility. Is there any such thing as Christians cheering each other up? Do you love me enough to want to help me? Does it mean anything to you that we are brothers in the Lord sharing the same spirit? Let me stop there. Sharing the same spirit. That's true camaraderie. When Christians are really, when they both have the Holy Spirit reside with them, within them and they're both followers of Christ, they share the same spirit. It's the same when Masons link up with each other, when another or fraternity brothers see another brother in fraternity, they automatically link up because they share the same spirit. It may not be the spirit of God, but they share the same spirit. Us as Christians, we share it when we're believers, when we when we are both followers of Christ, we share the same spirit. Now it says, Are your hearts tender and sympathetic at all? Then make me truly happy by loving each other and agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Working together with one heart and mind and purpose. One heart, one mind and purpose. Working together. Listen, listen what they said, man. It said, making me truly happy. This is what makes God happy. Making me happy by loving each other. And agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, working together with one heart and mind and purpose. Again, when you have the same spirit, you have one. Per you move on one accord. Y'all have the same heart, the same mind, the same purpose. You'll be amazed in the things that you could get accomplished like that. Because a lot of times you work on a job with people, y'all still don't have the same heart. Y'all, a lot of times. Y'all supposed to have the same goal and purpose, but a lot of times you don't. Your purpose may be just to stay in there for two weeks and get your money and then get out and quit. Don't even give them a two weeks notice. You know, another purpose purpose might be like, I'm going to go ahead and do everything I need to do for this company to get us to the next level. But see, Christians shouldn't be like that. It says don't. And this is verse three in chapter two. Again, this is Philippians chapter two, verse three says, don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. says, don't live to do that. Don't live to be a good impression on others, to make a good impression on others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. It says, be, see, this is the hard thing for people to do. And this is what get a lot of them to just be like, oh, the Christian stuff. Oh, I can't take it. It said God is telling you to think of others as better than yourself. Do you know that Jesus Christ, man, Jesus Christ was around sinners. Jesus Christ died for everybody. You saw what he did for Mary Magdalene. He stood in the breach. They were finna stone her. Jesus stood in the middle of all of her and those men and everybody, that whole mob, where the rocks could have came and hit him. He stood in the middle. 
and was like, you know, he who uh, was without sin cast the first stone, you know, char charged him up, let him know what he was, pretty much. They was all confused and, you know, but Jesus didn't see himself, even though he knew he was the son of God. He didn't see himself in that human vessel as, be as him being better than Mary Magdalene. He didn't see himself being better than that prostitute. He didn't see himself being better than um that the the that blind man who he was past some blind beggar who on the street you know who don't have nothing who probably dirty got filthy clothes man Jesus could have just walked past him like ah oh, don't touch me man I ain't got time for you no Jesus Christ understood man he stopped and took his time you know and would have did whatever he could for the man because. He didn't see himself as being better or I ain't had no time. But because the man is a bum, now, you know, he on a different level. I'm on a different level. I'm in a different tax bracket than him. I don't need to talk to him. Nah. Uh-uh. Jesus was humble and he was the ex living example of how we should operate on earth. He gave you a living example. So there is no excuse. Everybody who ends up in hell, like that man who... um. Who the, the rich man who didn't want to give uh, anything to the to the poor man and the man ended up dying and he was in hell and then he wanted the he wanted the angel to to relay the message to his brothers and and everything like that man the angel told him like man look it, even if I let you do that which I'm, I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna let you out of hell but even if I did that and you told them I allowed you to come back for a day and go tell them exactly like man what's going on with you I'm in hell now man you know they not gonna listen to you man. Because they got the gospel. They got the living example of Jesus Christ. You know, we have this, bro. This Bible here is the most, uh, the still the most popular, the most sold book that's ever existed, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is a, this exists everywhere. People have this. It's in hotels. You can get it on your phone. Click, click, click with the click of a button. People have the gospel. They have the example of Jesus Christ on earth, man. You understand? There's more proof of that ancient figure than any other ancient figure. You have to decide if he was the son of God or not. You have the example of the living God coming to earth in a human vessel. You understand? He showed you how to live. Now, everybody, we're not perfect. We're not Jesus. We may not get everything perfect all the time. We might not get everything right all the time. But as long as you are following him, staying close doing what he said to do, put on the full armor of the Lord, then you will be able to make it to the end. You'll you'll get your um the Holy Spirit to do the work, to finish the work within you. So you'll be able to um follow Christ the way you're supposed to. That's how it works. It may take a little time. It's like iron sharpening iron. Sometimes when you're making gold and refining gold, you got to put it back in there. Put it back in the fire, mold it some more. It happens like that. But God knows your heart. But he tells you clearly, don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they are doing. It says, don't just think about your own affairs. So God's not saying that, of course, you're you're going to think about your own affairs. We have to handle that. Did even you doing things for other people, that's your own affair. You feel me? That's you. But God's understanding that. It says, just be humble. And it says, don't just think of your own affairs. But be interested in others, too. Sometimes, you know, and I fall victim to this. Sometimes you be so busy and so caught up in yourself. You don't, you know, a person might tell you something and, and you move it so fast. See, I be moving, man. You know, I be, I really do. I be moving and, and trying to really handle the business that I have to handle for the Lord. You know, and a lot of times in doing that, even still in doing that, I could be moving so fast that a person might say something to me. And it don't resonate with me till I be in a car. Like, you know, I be in a, I may be in a store, so I go pay, and a person like me may say something that really resonated with me, like that I, where I could have maybe chimed in and gave them something that they needed, a word of the Lord. But it don't sit with me till I get in the car. Like, I just move too fast. I move through that. And sometimes a lot of us, really, we operate like that too often in life where we're moving through people. And this brings me to this. That brings me to this in relationships, man. 
Oh, God. People have it twisted today in 2023. Relationships, a union between a man and a woman is going to take work and it's going to take sacrifice. You're not going to have you're not going to be able to be selfish. And I said this in the beginning for men or women. If you're a woman, don't think that the relationship is just about you and everything that you want and getting all of that. Because if the man, if something happened to him and he can't provide it, then you're going to have to pick up the slack. You understand? You're going to have to do it. Sometimes the relationship may be 80-20 on both ends. Sometimes maybe 80-20 to the man. Sometimes maybe 80-20 to the woman. But that's what you signed up for. And it's no running in that. You run from it. You thinking that when you run from your marriage because there's problems, you thinking about only yourself. You're being selfish and God's never going to reward you for thinking, for doing that. You didn't think about your husband and you didn't think about your children. If you don't have children, you didn't think about your husband. You think about his family. You think about, you know, your family, the people who may have, you know, every invested everything in that and, and you being with them. That's a you crut like you really not thinking about you really being selfish. You're really not thinking about other people because you're crushing your husband. Instead of, you know, thinking, oh, I'm just not happy. I'm just not happy. I'm just not, man, life ain't about being happy all the time. You know, joy and happiness is not the same thing. Peace and happiness isn't the same thing. You understand? Tranquility and happiness isn't the same thing. You doing your purpose and fulfilling your role isn't always about you being happy. That's why you need godly women to, you know, when you enter a relationship. You shouldn't enter a relationship with no one, no, none of these secular women. You understand? None of these secular women. But I'm going to end this verse. I mean, I'm going to end this um, video with this scripture, with more scripture, man. More scripture. This is, I don't want to just, just say, just be humble and, and, and be selfless and, and stop thinking about yourself just because it's me saying it. No, I just gave you scripture. This is the Lord giving it to you. This is Jesus Christ's example. And that brings me to, uh, this is still in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. I'm going to start at. It says, your attitude should be the kind that was shown to us by Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on the cross. Man, how far did Jesus push it, bro? The living God, the being that started everything that you see today, started the earth to spin, I mean, started that started the earth to spin on its axis like a basketball, the earth spinning on God finger like a basketball. The stars that created time and space. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? <laughs> you not before God, there was nothing. You understand? God created everything. There was nothing before God. God came in and created time and space. You have like you have to wrap your mind. Their big bang is retarded because that had to be something to cause it. So we can't, we have to, do you have to start from the, the child's premise? A child can understand this from the basic premise of God, the creator and understand how powerful he is. But he laid aside all of that, his mighty power and glory and took the disguise of a slave and became like men. But he humbled himself even further going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on the cross. Jesus Christ didn't do nothing wrong. You know, free speech. What? He didn't do nothing wrong. We all saw the Pharisees and all the and and the uh, Hebrews and Israelites, the, the the Jews. They wanted to they wanted to give a uh, release Barabbas. They wanted a murderer, a straight up murderer. I'm gonna kill you. You know, wild savage. They wanted to release him and and put sinners Jesus to death. Jesus never did anything to nobody except help him. This was God in the flesh. And he died a criminal's death on the cross. That's how far God was going to push this. That's how far he pushed humility and servitude to you. You know, he, this is God. 
how much more can you expect? Oh, you too good? You too good to humble yourself? You too good to put yourself as a number two sometime? If you can't follow, you'll never be able to lead, man. And let and because uh let's stay on there and let's uh let's go into verse nine in Philippians chapter two, verse nine. It says, and he humbled himself even further, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on the cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I just pretty much gave it to you. That's enough right there. Don't think that just because you put yourself second and you do things, you know, to to edify others and you see others as better than yourself, that you will never have anything for yourself. You know, I just gave you the example. Jesus Christ, God was the most humble, you know, on earth. He was humble for, for sinners, people who don't who mock God, people, who, you know, who don't even believe in him. People who, you know, who talk crazy, you know, about God, the people of God. God died for them. You understand? He gave a holy life, a holy sacrifice so that you can have a chance to get into heaven. And when he did that, Jesus Christ has been edified. So he's been given the whole world. He's been given heaven. Then every knee in heaven shall bow and every knee on earth and under the earth shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So with that being said, I am Super Solican. This is the awakening. Peace and blessings to the hearers and doers. I'm gone.